Hey, how you doing? Welcome to episode 2 of FAQ. If you have more questions for me, put them in the comments below. Okay, let's get started. What Vildjian symbol theories do you prefer? A, K, or F? Well, for me, that really depends on the style of symbol because each series of symbol really has their own sound and it depends on what music you're playing too. So I'll just show you the ones that I like the most for heavy metal. My favorite crash symbol is probably the A Custom Brilliant Finish, anywhere from 16 inches to 19 inches. And yeah, I usually have like a 16 or a 17 on my left side and then on my right side I have either an 18 or a 19, you know, for riding on and stuff. For splash symbols, I like both A Customs and K Customs, and I really like actually the, uh, the K Custom Hybrid Splash. It's got brilliant finish on the inside, and on the outer rim, it's got a nice traditional finish, giving it a nice, you know, best of both worlds rim job, if you will. It's great! And for the hi-hat and the ride symbol, I actually used to be a Z Custom guy. Well, technically still am, they just, Zildjian changed the name of the line, because uh, I, I use the Dino Beat hi-hats and the Mega Bell ride symbol. And it, yeah, it used to be Z Custom, but then it went from Z, uh, to Z3, and now it's just called the Heavy A series, and uh, it's pretty heavy. Hi Famous, when you play live, do you use a click track or a metronome? Can you explain that setup and what you use? Yes, I almost always use a click track, and in fact, I prefer it, because, you know, sometimes you're just having a bad day and your body's just not in tune and you're feeling a little lethargic and... You might not know it, but you'll be playing a little bit slower than normal and you'll be slowing your band down, you know, you won't really feel. And sometimes the opposite, you know. What if uh, you don't play a gig for like three months and then you get up on stage, you just chug like fucking five Red Bulls and the adrenaline's pumping and you're just going really fast and you don't even realize it and, you know, the rest of the band's struggling to keep up with you. Here's a perfect example. When I was 14, 15 years old playing shows, my dad used to come to every show and he would videotape all of our sets. And you know, I'd watch the show the next day and I'd be watching it on, on the TV and I'd be like, holy crap, I was playing way too fast and I didn't even realize it, it's because of that adrenaline. So I definitely recommend playing to a click live because it'll keep your tempos perfect and you know, it might just make you a cleaner drummer too. And my click track setup usually consists of the click track along to the guitar track of the song or just the entire song itself with the click track. And my reason for this is that I usually like to follow certain melodies or patterns of the other instruments in whatever song it is. So if the guitar player fucks up live on stage, I don't want that to throw me off. I just want to keep playing the song like nothing happened, you know? A pre-recorded guitar track will never fuck up. And then from there, it's just a simple setup. I have a tiny little mixer, like two-channel mixer next to my drum set, and I plug my iPod or whatever has the click track into that. And I also plug my kick drum triggers into that mixer too, so I have individual volume control over both the kick and the click and then I plug my headphones into the mixer and that's pretty much it. Did you ever take drum lessons? And would you ever teach lessons online via Skype or FaceTime? Yes, I did take lessons. Uh, my parents actually took me for drum lessons when I was five years old, but they told me that I was too young. Yep, so I had to go back when I was eight years old and that's when I started lessons. And until, yeah, once I was 14, then I discovered double bass and all the fast metal shit and I was like, okay, now I wanna learn double bass, but my teacher was strictly a jazz guy, and he was just like, oh, I don't know diddly squat about double bass. So I was like, okay, see ya. So I bought uh, the Mike Porntoy VHS tape, the one that I talked about in the previous video, and I never looked back. And would I ever do Skype lessons? Yeah, I guess. I've never really done a Skype lesson before, but I'd give it the try um, if, if there's enough people that are interested. If, if you're interested, why don't you send me an email? Send me an email, and we'll talk about it. We'll talk some cheese, bruh. Do you have ADHD? Yes. Why do you use both microphones and triggers on your drums? I'll tell you why, Sir Paddington. Usually those microphones are actually just live audio. Um, sometimes I'll blend them with the trigger samples. It all depends on what song I'm doing and if it sounds right. But usually it's just live audio because I don't listen to all the trigger samples while I'm recording. Just the kick triggers and the microphones. And at the moment I only have a four channel interface which is definitely not big enough for my huge ass drum set. but. Pretty soon that's all gonna change because this summer I'm gonna be ordering a much larger interface, so I'm pretty excited about that. How old are you? 66. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a 28 years old. What are your kick pedal settings and all that stuff? My spring tension is probably like 90, like 80 to 90 percent tight. You definitely, I found that you need to have tighter springs if you want to get those fast, uh, if you want to get those fast speeds. You just gotta find your happy place, you know, depending on your muscles. For the variable drive lever, the VDL, that's this thing right here. This is what uh, gives the pedal a lighter, heavier feel. Changes up the feel, it's great. 
Mine's right in the middle. And if you want a really heavy feel, you want to go all the way down. And if you want a much lighter feel and a more throw into the head, you go up here. I'm good. But yeah, mine's right in the middle. Best of both rim jobs. <laughs> and usually my beater angle is the standard uh, factory 45 degrees. And this is actually right now I have them set at 60 degrees because I'm trying to learn heel toe technique. So I found it a little bit hard to do heel toe when it was a full 45 degree swing. So maybe until I get the technique down, I'll, I'll keep it for here for now, but we'll see what's happened. And there you have it, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Ask me more questions below, and we'll see you next time. Good. 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 Good.